Next up, number four is Usagi Club. And there's one word I can describe this series, or it'd be adorable. Uh, the series is focused on a 30-year-old office worker named Daichi who adopts and raises the illegitimate daughter of his grandfather named Ritten. And the series is mostly focused on Daichi juggling it, raising Rin and committing to his work. Uh, the series is mostly pre pretty grounded with its plot and down to earth. You, there are there aren't too many serious moments besides any altercation besides some altercations that Daichi comes across involving Rin and her biological mother, but. It's a pretty adorable series as Daichi and Rin go interact with one another and Rin deals with some challenges of growing up such as bedwetting and going into kindergarten. Uh, if you're, and this is adorable without pushing things too much like a boy title. So, if you're looking for adorable drama to get into, you can't go around with Usagi Drop. Next up at number three is Winery Sun. Uh, normally when I see transgenders portrayed in anime, they're usually used for some sort of common village. Uh, in the case of Wandering Sun, this is the first title I've seen that offers up a serious portrayal of transgenders or anyone with some sort of issue related to gender identity. This series is focused on several middle schoolers who come into conflict with gender identity and the challenges of growing up as they come to realize they can't go along with the role, go along with the gender that they want to be, as girls want to be boys, boys want to be girls, and whatever. And the characters are well aware that many people wouldn't consider this the norm, but it is something, but desiring to be the opposite sex is something that they really want. And it's kind of harshly believable in how it's portrayed, even though the characters seem to behave way more mature than, than for their age in terms of understanding how society views, tra views transgenders and gender identity. Uh, it does... It did render a snag for me for its TV airing because it, it was a title for the Nortamia block in winter. Only a le there were only a there were two of the episodes were merged into a compilation episode and only episodes, so instead of twelve there's only eleven. The compilation episode consists of the 10th and 11th episodes in the series following a major plot development involving one of the characters, but not to mention, since it's based on a manga series, uh, it doesn't have a proper ending, but otherwise, it was a very original series, because it's a, it was the first for me to see transgenderism and gender identity tackled in a serious light, like with Wandering Sun, and it's definitely worthwhile if you're looking for the topic to be explored seriously for the anime series. Next up at number two is Fate Zero. Well, what can I say? I've been a sucker for animated adaptations of type moon works as of late. I've seen the Cardo Kyokai film series, and Fate Stay Night, the Unlimited Blade Works movie, and whether or not people like it, there is a Super Hime anime, deal with it. Uh, Fate Zero was a definite choice for me that I wanted to see for the fall season, and it's definitely delivered. 
Ah, it's a prequel to Fake Stay Night, which explores the parents of several of the prominent characters in the series, like Shiro and Rin and Iris Vio, as the events of the Fourth Holy Grail War press on. The series is much more darker and serious than Fate Stay Night, as many of the characters involved in the Grail War are adults and become to learn learn some pretty learn some pretty serious and tragic developments involving the characters. And unlike Fate Stay Night, there is a greater focus on the master servant bond bond where we come to connect with men, many of the masters and servants throughout the series, whereas Big Stay Night was only focused on the connections involving Archer, Saber, Rin, and Shiro for Big Stay Night. Uh, Considering this is animated by UFO Table, this is one of the best, one of the most visually impressive series I've see, seen for the year. you got plenty of color, color and detail with character designs and scenery, some pretty fluid and intense battle scenes, and of course an epic soundtrack. For those not aware, UFO Table was responsible for animating the Cardo Kyokai film series, so their, the animation quality is just as you would expect. And finally, what I found to be the number one best anime of 2011 is Morali Penguin Club. Where do I even begin to talk about this title? Ah, uh, this is this was directed by the same director who did the complex sexual symbolism for the '97 anime *Revolutionary Girl Yuta*, and this series is focused on a on three of the Takabura siblings: Mari, Kamba, and Shoma. Uh, the two brothers are trying to trying to get get the get this diary to help cure the lethal the deadly illness of their younger sister Hibari, and it's much more complex on the surface there than you would think, as se there are several individuals trying to snag up the diary for their own different reasons, and we come to learn that all is not as it seems with a number of characters throughout the series, as they have their own tragic developments, and some characters even be not as who you would think in terms of their, of their beliefs. And it drops enough material going on where you even question who you could trust, who you should like, whether whatever you've seen is real or imaginary or whatever. Uh, it's not as visually it's not as visually impressive as Fate Zero, but it's still the animation as it is does well enough in painting just how complex the series is with exploring its themes concerning whether fate can be accepted considering the hardships that several of the characters go through in handling personal loss or trying to save the life of a loved one. It's bright, fluid, very Full of, quite full of symbolism, and definitely the most complex and most powerful title I've seen for this year. And it's these parties that have made the Road Angle Drum the best anime I've seen for 2011. 
Alright, uh, moving forward, I am planning on, since 2012 will be the 10th year I've been an Ame fan, I'm thinking of doing something grand to commemorate the occasion. Maybe some sort of countdown, I don't know, but definitely expect something big for me going into next year. Otherwise, for now, uh, this is GGN3 signing off with my thoughts on the top 10 best anime of 2011.